Welcome to this training video. We will be preparing an example of a braced excavation with hydraulic whalers and struts by maybe higher in the UK. The first thing that we'll do is going to change our design settings and we're going to make sure that we're following British standards. In order to do that we'll go to the design tab and then click in the general settings. We'll select the British flag right here with the BS standards and OK. I won't set these settings as default right now, but if you are working in the UK all the time you could set them in like that. We're going to make sure to have uh, British sizes, UB system. And in order to quickly create a model, what we'll do is like, we'll go on the general tab, we'll click on the model wizard, we're going to keep metric units, and we're going to select the type of analysis that we want to perform. There's an option to run a conventional analysis only, using a limit equilibrium method. There's an option to run both analysis types, both a limit equilibrium and a nonlinear, or run a nonlinear analysis alone. We can select the type of pressures that we want to assume. We could assume peg pressure for the classical approach. And click Next. There's different available types that you can model easily with the wizard, but in order to model the braced excavation with struts and whalers, we're going to select this type of an excavation here. This is going to create a two-dimensional model, as well as a top view with the whalers and struts. We're going to specify a 7-meter excavation and a wall length of 12 meters. We're going to set the excavation width as 12 meters, top elevation at 0, and ground water at elevation minus 5 meters. The secondary length of the excavation along the x direction we're going to set off as like 24 meters and we can define the horizontal spacing as 5 meters. Now these are regular steel pipe sections here for the struts but we want to use hydraulics so we're going to click here on the advanced options use hydraulic or mechanical struts and click edit and it's recommended that we uh, use a section from the database we're going to go open database maybe higher and select one of the available sections click OK actually before we click OK uh, we have the, the basic sections here that are being used a defined allowable strength an ultimate we can also define transition sections if we wanted to and connection elements, connector plates, start plates, and so on. We're going to say use hydraulic whalers. Click Edit. Import from database. Maybe higher. And we can go, for example, multi-brace. Again, here we have properties for the main steel section, the inner section of the hydraulic ram, the outer section, we can always click edit. We can also load the jack properties from the database in case we have saved the specific jack. We have allowable moments for the outer section and the allowable jack or ram capacities with the minimum length and the maximum length and the joint moment capacities for inwards and outwards bending. Let's actually change this here. In the advanced tab we have the available segment lengths that are specified by maybe higher. The program can automatically select and auto size uh, the braces based on the available length between uh, corners. We can also edit the start joints and the main joints. And of, when we make modifications, we can always save to database. Click OK. 
We can model changes in temperature for the struts and a temperature coefficient. The next part is to edit the soil types. Now these are some predefined soil types. Uh, we have a soil name that is basically used in the boring. We keep this as short as possible. A description, colors. We can show and hide the SPT and CPT test data. The basic soil type, unit weights, below the water table total and above the water table, effective strength properties for the soil, and elastoplastic properties, and we can always estimate from these buttons based on various recommendations. For the clays, we have a drained effective properties and undrained. Let's change, for example, the undrained shear strength to 200 kPa, so we can model a stiff clay and the elastoplastic properties as well. The next step will be to edit the borings or the soil layer elevations and the idea here is that we can type in the top elevation of its layer and keep reusing the layer that we want. When we have undrained clays or clays in general in the nonlinear analysis we should change the OCR or, or consolidation ratio so we can capture greater strengths to match what is happening in the field we click next we have a sheet pile wall but we can click edit section data and we can change and select the manufacturer add new wall sections and use different wall types like soldier pile walls sheet pile walls second piles tangent pile walls diaphragm walls Soldier pile and tremid concrete, custom walls, or combined king pile walls. So we can actually add more sections if we wanted. But for this example, we're going to keep the seed pile wall. Click next. Here in this tab stages, we can actually specify where exactly supports are located in terms of depth. Or elevation. We're going to specify in this example only one support at a depth of two meters. We can actually use automatic elevations here and equally space a number of supports, two or more. But we're going to go just with one. The excavation is going to be half a meter below that level. We can change that to one or so on, however we feel. Click next. The wizard allows us to easily specify searches, like a two-step searches directly on the wall triangular searchers or a strip load behind the wall and different analysis options for how the search charges are computed on the wall we're going to keep elasticity equations we're going to click next and we're going to keep the current structural settings if we wanted to analyze British Eurocode cases we could go here and select all the British Eurocode cases to be generated or other Eurocode cases and click OK now the program is realizing that we're using a sheet pile wall and the dimensions don't exactly match the sheets that we're using. So the program is recommending that it changes dimensions and we can click yes. And the program has gone ahead and basically generated a model of uh, the excavation. That's a top view. We're seeing here the, hyd the hydraulic braces and struts. And well, when we look at the uh, the 2D model, we can see all the construction stages. Now anything here you can double click, surcharges, you can right click, deactivate, right click, activate, same with supports. You can change the elevations from this, uh, the general tab, surface elevation next to wall, or you can actually press the mouse button and drag. Now if we wanted to change the location of uh, the braces here, we can double click on that and change the exact uh, locations. We could delete one of those braces. And relocate to an exact location. Let's actually place it a little bit closer.
So we're just specifying the distance from the individual nodes here. One of the other things that we need to make sure though is that uh, our struts do not fall directly on joints. Another thing of course that we can do is that uh, we can edit the hydraulic whaler segments and this individual whale length segments and depending on what we want and how our connections are we can actually specify if we have a pin connection at the start of the member or the end of that segment. This way we don't have to transfer any moment and the program will handle this. We have to make sure though that this is a statically determined analysis. So with that we can actually press the calculate button to analyze all the design sections and the 2D model. We're getting our basic results on the summary table for the design section in terms of wall displacement, settlement, moments on the wall, sears, stress checks on the wall, maximum support reaction and critical support checks, and the available wall embedment safety factors as well as for hydraulic heave. By clicking on the one design section, we can see those results for every stage. If there was something that was critical, it was going to pop out in red. And we'll have more warnings here. Here we'll have some basic warnings that are non critical for the time being. And we can generate a report by clicking here Generate Report and creating preview. So I'm clicking to not use borders. And this summary includes the summary of moments for the design section, structural materials that we're using, a basic model uh, here with the walls, excavation depths, maximum mo positive moments versus capacity and maximum negative moments, and the basic assumptions on the last stage, we're getting envelopes of moments, shears, Soil properties, wall properties. There's a lot of data that you can actually include. Results from the state, its state with soil stresses, displacements, moments, etc. We can export to PDF and Word. Click exit. And we can view those results directly on the screen in terms of uh, soil pressures, stress checks. We can also go on the project plan, click on the stress checks on the struts, on the whalers, we can see the bending moments, the shears, displacements, axial loads. And this way we can model a whole excavation and check that everything is fine. There is no automatic uh, optimization for uh, which whalers uh, you should use from a, a given manufacturer of hydraulic braces at this time. But uh, the excavation doesn't have to be rectangular. You can actually create more complex shapes. You can click on those nodes, change coordinates. And when we go for reporting the 3D data, we can go on reports. Now I'll take out uh, this data here, select all, erase. We can go on 3D frame results, take a summary in here, some basic diagrams and individual results. And we can say preview. And there's a summary of all of the member stress checks and the critical moments and axial loads that give us the critical checks on the struts, a layout, showing axial loads, and then on each individual brace we can see which uh, reaction is being calculated at every level, 
and at every strut location or brace location, axle loads, shears, moments, the load directly on the brace, the stress checks and so on. And of course that can be exported to PDF and Word. And this concludes our presentation of how we can model hydraulic braces or mechanical braces and struts in deep X, uh, in this case with maybe higher sections. Thank you. Please feel free to contact us if you have any questions.